probably know, I'm uh, the chair of the council's committee that deals with civil rights, which includes labor rights, uh, economic development, utilities, and arts. Um, some of the stuff that I'll cover will follow into those areas, but some are not in those areas. And I want to tell you about some of these other things, because I know the things that you, that you care deeply about. So first, uh, I want to touch on um, the issue of the Duwamish head trees. Um, you may remember that they, there was a, um, a cutting of um, a couple hundred of those trees back in um, early this year. Uh, I provided an update in June, and uh, at that time what we had learned is that the police department was still uh, engaged with their investigation. And once they uh, had completed that investigation, if they felt that there was probable cause to prosecute, they would send that on to the county prosecutor's office. And if the county prosecutor decided to prosecute, that would move forward. And if not, the city attorney um, would, would instead prosecute. Um, I asked for an update this week, and I'm expecting, and, and basically my request was, is the police department done with their investigation? If so, if they passed it on to the county prosecutors. Uh, what, what I learned is we're going to be hearing something from the law department next week. And so I'm, I'm anticipating um, some, some forward movement on, on the issue. Uh, also, within the, the context of uh, public safety, um, earlier this year, the council passed a small BNO tax increase um, and a small, uh, or, or created a brand new business license tax. And this was um, intended to help with the plan to hire 200 new police officers over the next several years. Um, I work to revise the mayor's proposal to create a brand new tier for businesses over $5 million so that the majority of this new um, revenue would be coming from large businesses instead of small businesses. As, as part of that action, the council also created uh, about 40 new positions. So, SP can actually begin to, to fill in as soon as they're able to hire and, and train them. The last item on public safety, I'm sure many of you um, heard about the recent vote on a non-binding resolution regarding the North Precinct. Um, I, uh, this was a re uh, initially, this was a resolution that was uh, written in such a way that it endorsed the, the uh, proposed cost of the North Precinct at uh, $149 million that would make it the most expensive police precinct in the country. Um, I propose that we remove the dollar amount, move the resolution forward, and together with Councilmember Gonzalez, also required a racial equity toolkit analysis on the facility as one way to further bring down some of the costs. And we'll be discussing this more um, in the upcoming budget. On the issue of transportation, you may have heard, um, read yesterday, as a matter of fact, about the um, new speed limits legislation. Actually, uh, hearing about it uh, in the paper today was the first I'd, I, I, I had actually heard of it. We hadn't seen the actual actual legislation yet. Our office has looked into it. It will be before the Transportation Committee next Tuesday. What we've been able to find out so far, it would lower non-arterial speed limits citywide, and this is non-arterial, from 25 to 20 miles per hour. As far as the arterial, arterial speed limits, it would only lower them in center city neighborhoods, downtown South Lake Union and other neighborhoods specifically near downtown. Based on what we've heard from Council Central staff, and they're just getting their hands around the, the proposal as well, it does not appear it would reduce speed limits on any arterials in District 1. Um, it, but again, it would apply to non-arterial streets in neighborhoods citywide. So that's important to, to know as it relates specifically to, to our neighborhoods. And I'll be working to get more information uh, before the committee vote. Super hyper-local issue related to public safety and transportation. I've been working with residents over on Beach Drive. Um, since Actually since late last year, um, they were having problems with a lot of um, people drag racing on Beach Drive. And um, we learned uh, this week that SDOT is very likely, SDOT is already committed to um, installing some speed humps um, in that location. And we've heard this week that they're very likely to begin that, that work this month, giving the folks in that area some, some relief. As it relates to 35th Southwest, uh, I don't have a whole lot to report on that issue. Um, it's something that I know is uh, very vital.
guys, the people have really, really strong feelings on, on either side on whether or not to move into phase two of that project and rechannelizing uh, re the streets um, on 35th, reducing the lanes from four to two. I've heard a lot of a lot of support for the proposal and a lot of opposition to the proposal. We've asked SDOT to consider public comments on how they do their one year analysis on, on phase one, and that will be due out in October. Uh, let's see here. Um, as far as utility issues, a big, big piece of my committee work. Um, the NCIS update, that's the, um, the update how the city is combining the billing systems for both SPU and Seattle City Light, um, and a whole bunch of other related um, customer service type activities that the utilities do beyond just billing. Um, on last Monday, not this past Monday, the one before, there was an error that led uh, to several customer bills being sent to other customers. Um, we found that um, this was uh, something that affected a lot of folks, and a lot of folks saw not the not the private information related to billing, but uh, information about people's names and addresses, that sort of thing, their billing usage. Um, SPU and Seattle City Light and the Department of Information Technology worked very quickly to resolve the problem. We have learned today that it resurfaced again. Um, they they see they stopped um, they shut down the program and are troubleshooting again. It's not it, it's unfortunate. It's not uncommon for such a huge rollout like this for there to be these sort of glitches. Um, but again, we have confirmed again today that no private information related to people's uh, billings and accounts is is has been released. The information, as as we understand it, is limited to people's names and addresses. Um, another utility issue I've been working on is um, currently for when people are getting um, their utilities shut off because of non-payment, in order to get on a time payment program and have your, um, your power or your water reinstalled, um, there's a different standard. For Seattle City Light, you only have to do a 50% of the past due down payment, um, and then they'll put you on time payment programs. With Seattle Public Utilities, it's actually a 75% down payment. And for low-income folks whose utility bills are much larger than their city light bills, typically, it's a really high hurdle. So we've been trying to get them to be consistently at 50%. Um, we've been trying to work collaboratively, collaboratively with the executive on this, and they've been resistant. So it looks like we're going to be having to um, pursue legislation probably in December. In the area of economic development, uh, in my first week as a council member, I um, was approached by a District 1 uh, constituent who came to me with an idea called the uh, Legacy Business Initiative. Um, it was being pursued in, uh, or it had been successfully pursued and implemented in San Francisco. It's a way to identify businesses that have been around for a long time, that are cherished, uh, and that are part of the fabric of, of a community and finding ways to support those particular businesses, uh, whether or not they uh, are, it started off in San Francisco as a, as a dive bar initiative, saving their local dive bars. Um, and, and it uh, sort of morphed into the idea of any, any bar or any business that is a small business, is 30 years old, um, and has particular characteristics that a community values, would they be eligible for this legacy business registry if people put themselves on uh, voluntarily and in exchange for being on, a, on, the, on the registry, you commit to doing certain things that are important to the city, but in exchange you get some support from the city to, uh, to, to preserve and uh, address the, the risks associated with high development in some of these areas which are creating a lot of pressures on these businesses. And so we're looking at trying to replicate something like that in Seattle. The, um, the mayor created a uh, affordable uh, commercial task force earlier this year in response to the council's request last year during the budget. They're going to be making recommendations later on in September. I've been working on this big uh, business led, uh, legacy business program together with uh, Washington uh, Trust for Public Lands, as well as, um, I'm sorry, Washington, I can't remember the, I'm, I'm blanking on the name, His, uh, Historic Seattle and the Washington State Organization that does historic preservation as well. Um, and we made the pitch to the mayor's task force that they ought to consider 
pushing forward a, re a recommendation like a business, uh, legacy business program, and we'll be finding out later on in, in September on whether or not that's going to move forward. Uh, let's see. Oh, the other thing I just, if you didn't already know, we did a, we did a survey of the businesses that people wanted to save. Uh, of the top three businesses, uh, Scarecrow was number one, but uh, two and three uh, were Husky Deli and Easy Street Records. <laughs> It was not a vote on the content of the 
legislation. It did not indicate anybody's support for the content of the legislation. It was merely a procedural vote to adopt what's called the referral calendar. And the referral calendar is the mechanism that the city council uses to refer legislation to a, com to a committee. Um, I'm really confident that there's going to be a lot of debate around this piece of legislation. Typically, uh, bills that are, uh, that are referred to committee, usually only really routine bills are unamended or passed un unamended as is. Other bills are amended and still others, there are full substitutes to replace the entire bill. There are so many issues. The intent of the council in referring this bill to a committee was to get the legislative discussion going. Since the beginning of this year, fully 95% of the encampments that have been removed in the city have been reoccupied. What we're doing is not working, and we need to have a discussion about how to do something more effective with our finite public resources and making sure that we are focusing them on the areas that are truly health and safety issues and focusing our outreach resources in such a way that we are actually giving people a place to go um, and actually expand, uh, expanding the, the, the services and housing that's available for us. So more, more to say on that right now, but I just really wanted to, um, to dispel the, the, the fears and the concerns that people seem to have about the council wanting to open up park space and, um, and school grounds uh, for camping. This is, the people, there are, of, of, the, of the parks in the city, 40% of them are currently occupied by, chronically, by homeless people. We are not talking about opening these areas up, we're talking about figuring out a way to manage what is currently happening in a way that is more responsible and responsive to community.